Hello and welcome everyone. It's so good to see all of your faces and welcome to the Hope Story Circle and welcome to Peace On, your source for inspiring conversations and information from thought leaders across the spectrum on topics related to the strategies of building peace, fostering nonviolence, and creating a world that thrives, shifting our understanding toward empathy, compassion, and connection. My name is Terry Mason. I'm on the board of the Peace Alliance, and I'm joined today to facilitate by Liz Gannon Graydon, who is also on our board, and Yelena Popovich, who is our Teaching Peace in Schools lead on our council. And our special guest today is a dear longtime friend of mine. Her name is Carol Schuberg. And Carol, come off mute and say hello if you would. Come off mute. You can do it. <laughs> I see you clicking. It hasn't come off mute yet, though. You can do this. I know you can. Um, oh, fantastic. There you Hello, are. Everybody. Yeah, there you are. Hi, everyone. It's a joy and honor to be here. Thank you, Terry, for inviting me and for Liz and Yelena to uh, also inviting me. Yes. Oh, so happy to have you here. We are going to start, though, before we get into your story, which is a wonderful, inspiring story. We're going to start with Yelena leading us in a lovely meditation, if you would, Yelena. Absolutely. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are and whenever you're listening to this. Yeah, I'm just inviting you into centering. Let's start with centering. And um, we're going to kind of go into a journey of centering. Centering with Lent, centering in wet, centering in back, and centering into our purpose. So, yeah, you're welcome to find any uh, position of your body that your body needs at this moment that can be you're sitting, standing, or laying down. And I invite you to first notice where are your feet? Can your feet touch the earth and sense the lengthening, be the grounding thing to gravity? Yeah, really noticing the connection, earth your feet and your upper body see if you can lift through your upper body not stiff but lift so that your upper body is upright but not uptight and just ground through your lower body and lift through your upper body Centering in Lent, finding our core, finding our core there and centering to the ground and lifting to the sky. Now see if you can find the edges of your sides, the side of your body, kind of Center in your width. From side to side. Noticing if there is the same sense of center and core while you expand from side to side. Center and width. I invite you to notice your back. Back is often neglected, but that's the part of us that carries us, carries us throughout the day. And you can also say it's part where our ancestors. So can you center in the back? It is who has your back. And 
then I you to center. Notice the front side of your body, your chest, your abdomen, your heart. Perhaps you notice breath now. Just pulsing of your heart. As you are with that, I invite you to center on purpose and invite what is the intention can hold for our gathering today. Perhaps just to continue feeling your center throughout it. Maybe it's to connect this beautiful community. Whatever it is, mark it with your awareness. And the last few moments, just invite you sensations of the body, breath, your own time when you're ready, allowing your hands and Eyes to open if they were closed around, allowing a light in. Ready, just joining this and join us with your cameras on. It's always lovely to see your beautiful faces. Welcome, Carol. So glad you're joining us today. Thank you. That was such a beautiful meditation. Thank you, Yelena. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hello, everybody. I'm Carol. I'm blessed and honored to be here with you today and to share my story in this beautiful circle of hope. Um, and again, thank you, Terry. Terry and I have known each other a long time. We performed together, and this is a truly a joy to, to share with you all. So, I'll begin. Um, as I thought about what I wanted to speak about today, three things came to me. I love things in threes and it's community, connection and center. And I wanna give you a little backstory regarding the three C's as I call them. Growing up, I was a competitive gymnast as well as a dancer. And my dad, before every gymnastic meet would whisper in my ear and say to me, Remember the three C's, which were concentrate, confidence, and charisma. So as I'd be going on my balance beam routine or floor routine, I would just sort of really program those in. So today I say to you, you know, those three elements, which I love because all three, Terry and Liz and Yelena mentioned community, connection, and center. So what I want to also then relate to those are three different areas where I utilize them, which are places where I teach dance and choreograph. And um, the first of which is an organization called AHRC here in New York. And we work with adults with special needs. And a dear friend of mine who I've known for well over 40 years, Dale Hensley, started this program called Our Broadway with these beautiful, wonderful folks who have a variety of different special needs. Some are blind, some have on the spectrum with autism, some are nonverbal. So it's just a tremendous group and they range in ages from 20s through their 60s. So Dale started this program in 2017 and about four years ago, I said, I just would love to volunteer and do whatever I can with you all. And so then as things transformed, I became the choreographer and the dance teacher and um, it's one of the big passions of my life, working with this group. And I encourage within the group, 
these three elements of connection, community. So they feel that sense of a tribe within them, especially as we're doing our shows. And then as I teach dance, dance is such a wonderful way to physically come into contact with our center. But I try to do it spiritually, mentally, psychologically. And one thing I do within all the, I've got two other groups I'll tell you about, but one thing I always use to start the class is I have them put their hands on their heart and we call that home base heart center so that it's somewhere they can always come back to and home to and if things are getting a little bit distracted say or maybe I just say you know, let's just all take a moment let's go back to our home base heart center and I find it a wonderful centering tool um, the next group I want to share with you that I teach are um, once a week here in New York City I teach professional dancers a jazz class which is Another great passion of mine, which is spreading and sharing the knowledge of the history of all the different styles of jazz and of the great choreographers and teachers I've worked with. And so these are, again, they range in age through their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s as well. Many of them have danced on Broadway shows. Some are coming to the city for the first time. So it's, a, again, a variety of ages and different levels. And again, which I love is a feeling of community and tribe that is also developing within this group, especially coming out of the pandemic now that we can actually do classes in person. And then that connection, which is actually eye to eye. So there's not even a screen in front that we can actually exchange energy. We can exchange a sense of in the room together and what that feels like and how we learn from each other. And then again, centering not only psychologically, spiritually, but in a very definite physical form. And I talked to him a lot about even a lot of the East Indian work that I studied. And I tell them about, you know, three fingers below your belly button is the tandiam, which is in acupuncture practice. That's also our, our, our power center as well. So we work on, our centers and our power centers and our spiritual centers. Um, so that's a beautiful group of dancers here in New York. And then the third group I wanna speak about is I teach on Saturdays, a group of high schoolers who are in, there's a program here in New York, the Amos Musical Theater High School uh, conservative conservatory program. And I'm the choreographer in it. And then two very dear friends, one is the director and then we've got a lovely musical director. and. That's a whole other realm too, teaching high schoolers and especially again in this time in our lives, you know, as they're now showing up in the physical form because we last year we did a lot of the teaching virtually and we finally were able to come back a little bit in person. Um, but uh, again in threes I love things in threes and in fact we were speaking about this with Liz and Terry and Yelena yesterday I learned this from my spiritual teacher her name is Alma Danielle and she's written some beautiful books Ask Your Angels is one of her books and we also have a meditation uh, every so often with Alma on Zoom um, but way back she uh, we we used to have Friday night meditations at her home and she had distilled the three rules of the universe down to its sort of simplest form, which the first is show up, tell the truth and let go. And so I also teach my students that, you know, be it my high schoolers, you know, the 85% you're here, you've shown up, you know, and then be in your truth, live your truth, dance your truth, speak your truth, be your authentic self and then let go let go of outcome and whatever spiritual belief you have, let go, let God, or let go, let the universe, or let go, let love. Um, so within the three groups, you know, I also try to instill that. Um, and, you know, one thing that I also love is hope. Um, hope has certainly gotten me through in some of my, what you want to call dark side of the moon times. Um, Hope is that light there that continues. And so within the three groups too, you know, we, we have our first performance of this season with my adults with special needs on Wednesday, September 14th, it's the Wizard of Oz. And um, we do it at the Jerry Orbach Theater on 50th Street, right off of Broadway. And they just are filled with so much hope and excitement because also what Dale, the director and myself do is we love to instill ownership of, of be it the show they're doing or in my classes, the combination or the warm up, you know? Um, so that hope just, it just like opens up their heart. You feel that sort of 
vibration radiating. You know, they've got this hope to look forward to. And we also spoke yesterday about consistency. And I find that, you know, I show up for my adults with special needs twice a week, my professional dancers once a week, and my high schoolers on Saturdays once a week. Um, but there is such a beautiful thing with consistency, you know, how in all of their, these classes, you know, they memorize my warm up. They're able to learn certain steps that I use and repeat a lot. And they, they, they have that sense of, oh, we did that. We know that. And so that, again, contributes to their ownership, to their sense of center, to their sense of, I got this. I own this. So I love that level of, of the teaching. And, um, you know, as we were was thinking about today too, part of that consistency, also you learn to sort of go with the waves of change, right? And to meet them where they are as well. Uh, within each group, um, there are challenges, of course, you know, so that we, you know, as spiritual warriors, we can sort of ride that tide of that. And in that tide, it's like, I'm gonna meet you right here today. And that's good. And that's perfect and enough and lovely, you know, so, we be, there's a sense of teaching kindness to the self and kindness. I teach that even, you know, to each other, you know, as I, as I put them in groups and spacing and, you know, it's okay. Let, let that person have that window psychologically, physically, spiritually, you know, they, they get to show up too. So you all get to show up, you know, in it. So I, you know, I say this to you all because my modality is through dance, but I feel like whatever you all are doing in your lives, you know, these principles, be it if you're teaching meditation or aromatherapy or acting or painting or gardening, you know, there's a through line with all of this that we can come into community, we can come into connection, we can within it find our center, you know, so that we meet each other in our authenticity, you know, in that center, but we're also in our tribe and we're connecting. And I, I just think that that can really help to raise the vibrations here on this, you know, planet where we are. I think we all need to help connect each other again amidst it. Um, well, uh, I think that's my story. <laughs> Thank um, you, Carol. Yeah, I, yes. I, it's a joy to share, really, thank truly. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, Liz, Yelena, what about an inquiry? Yeah, Yelena, is it okay if I, yeah, give the inquiry? I just want to thank you, you know, for your story, which is so simple and so beautiful. Thank right? you. Right? Elements are so, um, as you said, they run through all of our lives. Mm -hmm. And as we were about the three C's, right? The the community, the connecting, and the centering. I love the way you collect. I love the way you connected. That is through connecting and community that we find center. Mm -hmm. So the inquiry we would love for all of you to think about is in this moment. You know, we talked about how, or or, or um, Carol talked about how she finds that through dance, right? But there are other ways we can connect in community. And so what we'd like you to think about as you go into the groups are in this moment, where do you find that connecting community where you feel centered? And if you want to just kind of talk with the people in your small group about what that looks like and feels like, or if you're still longing to find that, how might you think about fostering that where you are and what that might look like for you? So, so we invite you to think of one of those two things. Where do you show up where you find that consistent connection to community? And, that, um, and then if, if that is still a thing that's lacking in this moment, how do, how do you foster it or bring fostering of those ideas to the people around you? Wonderful, thank you, Liz. Carol. So as, as we go into the breakout rooms, I just want to remind everyone of our agreements, and those are to speak from your heart, to listen with your heart, to say just enough so that others have an opportunity to share, and to keep confidentiality. We'll come back together after a few minutes, and feel free to tell your own personal story but don't tell someone else's personal story unless they choose to. You can certainly speak to the themes 
but not the details because it'll be on the podcast and we don't want to share unless someone's comfortable to share. So those are our agreements. I'm going to pause the recording and then we'll come back together in about 20 minutes. So I'm just going to pause. Well, welcome back, everyone. I'm happy to see your faces. I'm excited to hear what people want to share. Who would like to share anything that's alive for you right now that bubbled up while you were in your breakout room? You can unmute yourself. Well, Kathy and I had some wonderful discussions yeah. and uh, I shared with her a few things that I've learned from my spiritual teacher, Alma Danielle. And um, one is called uh, the it's called expand your capacity for paradox, which is something to contemplate. You know, as, as Kathy and I were discussing about different modalities, as she works with her clients, I work with my students. And another thing that I learned from another mentor, Tony Stevens, and I, we didn't talk about this yet, Kathy, but he always told me to keep my palms open. He's like, Carol, don't, don't hold on so hard. Just open your palms. So sometimes I'll just tell my students, just let's all just stand there. Let's just open our palms up. Open your heart, open, release it. So those are a couple other tools. <laughs> nice. Open yeah. your palms. Yeah. Open I, took, I took a lot of notes today. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I appreciated about talking to Carol is that we both were talking about how wonderful it is to be in the work that we're in. And as women at the age that we're at, we're greatly appreciated. We're, we have such vitality. Um, and so that was always my fear being in corporate America when I was in it. It's like, they're gonna want me out pretty soon, right? That I, I will have no value and I have so much value now. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love yeah. that. I feel that too, Kathy. Who else would like to share? Anything bubbling up? Either what you talked about or what you were thinking about that you didn't say out loud. I just want to say, not by way of invoking her, but just how good it is to see Angie on the call. I just love seeing Angie's yeah. face. Hi, Angie. Oh, the purple flowers. To see you. Oh, that's from my mom's garden. Those are pictures I took before she passed away. Oh, she they're... had a jungle of everything: rosemary, basil, uh, uh, what is it? Jerusalem artichokes, everything. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice to see you. Good to see you. I miss you all so much. That's glad. I'm glad you're here. Anna, you had your camera on for a moment. Did you want to share? Anna, maybe not. Kathy, you're on mute. I see your mouth moving. Mm -hmm. Oh, Anna's muted. I don't know. She might be talking. I'm not sure. Yeah. One other thing I want to say, too, because yeah. when I was speaking with Kathy and I was so admiring the fact that she really kept listening to her instincts and she knew that at a certain age and she said 50 she went back to school and and how wonderful and got her master's in social work and uh I love this phrase I call it listen to the whispers because our our instincts or our hunches they're all divine you know and if we just take that moment and and Kathy and I also discussed this thing that I love to teach which is pause on purpose so you take that moment between the stimuli and instead of going right to reaction, take a moment, go to response, you know? And so coupled with just listening to those whispers, oftentimes in that pause, we get the information we're supposed to receive, you know? So, you know, I, I call it just, you know, these little whispers are all around us or little Sometimes I see these little sparkles on my carpeting and I just think, oh, 
that's a little moment from my friend Tony <laughs> Stevens. I mean, even if I just make that up, but to mm. me, he always had a sparkle and he was like, I'm, I'm just on the other side. Just keep, keep doing what you're doing, you know? So listen for the whispers. Yeah. 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 See, I love that. I've never heard it uh, framed like that before. Right. It's always listen to your inner, inner voice, listen to whatever, listen to the whispers. Uh, I just, it frames it so beautifully. So I wrote that down too. Good. I mean, because it can just be just in the air or just a little sparkle on the rug or it's like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in my field, uh, we call that quantum flirts. Oh, I love that, Terry. Wow. <laughs> quantum flirt I'm, write, I'm writing that down i've never <laughs> heard that either <laughs> oh i love that me too yeah oh that's great that's fabulous anyone yeah. else anything you'd like to share Okay, well, if not, I'm going to put some links in the chat. Um, Peace on and the Hope Story Circle are brought to you by the Peace Alliance and our website is peacealliance.org. Our mission is to empower civic action for a culture of peace. I invite you to our Facebook page. There's this very special action that's being done right now. So I invite you to go check it out. Also, our podcasts, you can access Peace on from the website. And there's a page about our Hope Story Circles. You can share with your friends, invite them to join us or to listen to the podcasts. There's also a link for our Blueprint for Peace. And this is a major initiative to make peace and nonviolence an effective organizing principle in federal, state, and local government policy. And by signing that petition, you will automatically send messages to your local, state, and federal officials, letting them know that you support policy related to violence reduction and peace building. There's also a page about the Department of Peace Building Legislation, HR 1111, which is our foundational piece of legislation that we continue to advocate for. We are a small nonprofit. We welcome donations of any size. So there's a donate link there. We're especially looking for peace partners in 2022. We're looking for 22 new peace partners, which are monthly donors to give us sustainable income. So I invite you to consider that. Also the calendar of events, that's where you can find when we'll have our next Hope Story Circle and the other events that we have going on throughout the month. Our next Hope Story Circle I can share with you, our guest is going to be Azim Kamisa, who is quite an extraordinary man, a longtime friend of the Peace Alliance. So I invite you to join us then and to share that with other people because it's gonna be a very inspiring call. Azim is quite amazing. Just as Carol has been. Carol, thank you again so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. What an honor and a privilege to be with you all. Thank you for inviting me and letting me share with you. And you all, I love your spirits. Keep on opening your palms and listening to the whispers. (laughs) Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Liz, do you want to close us out? You're on mute, Liz. Thank you. I think since Kathy shared hers, I'm going to tell you, I was doing the same thing, copying all these notes. So I think I'm going to try to just read a few things that came up as we were talking and then tie them all together. And I started with the story, Carol, I was so taken by your approach to dance. And the story I shared with Terry in our small group was as a little girl, I always wanted to dance, but it just was not accessible to us. We didn't have the money for lessons or anything like that. So a few years back, I was sitting you know, at the, in the tea party as I, you know, do weekly and a woman stopped by and she, it was her first time and she was a dancer who had been in the Bolshoi ballet. Her name was Valentina. And I was so fascinated and she told all these beautiful stories. And I said, I always want to dance. And she said, it is not too late, you can dance. She said, but find a Russian teacher because if you find an American teacher, they'll tell you you are wonderful and you will not be wonderful. She said, but a Russian teacher will tell you you are terrible and you will get better. And it brought up this story that Terry told, I won't share the story, but she talked about the one time she did have a Russian ballet teacher, she was in fear the whole time. So that led to this discussion among the three of us in the room about, and Yelena said, 
two beautiful things, well, a million beautiful things. So Terry said that she then had this other teacher who said, I teach you the steps, but your creativity is what you fly with. Is that how you said it? And it was yeah. Tom Reed, Carol. He said, I'll just use the steps, but you have to fly with your steps. Yes, yes. So I thought that, and that's true, like you acknowledged earlier, right? Your, your, your modality is dance, but I think that's true everywhere, right? Someone mm -hmm. can teach you the steps, but you'll fly with them. Yes. And then uh, Yelena mentioned, and there's one word that I scribbled so quickly, I can't read it, Yelena, so you can finish it. She said, at each moment, we're either feeding the fear or cultivating, is it heart-centeredness? It's heart something. I don't know if you said. Consciousness. Consciousness. Oh. Okay. Yes. Heart and so I love those. And then Yelena, the last two things I'm going to bring together is um, Yelena quoted a book, The Joy of True Meditation by Jeff Foster it is. Wow. And, and this was the quote that meditation is pure fascination with the moment as it is, as it is. Pure fascination for the moment it is. So I wanted to tie that to what you just said about listening to the whispers, right? So if a couple of times a day, we can just go into that centered place you talked about where we can be fascinated with the moment and we can listen to the whispers and make sense of it. And I loved when you talked about the glitter, you know, and it says, oh, of course that's Tony. And I do that all the time. And, and sometimes people say to me, you know, it could just be glitter. And um, what I'm gonna say in closing, cause I think this is what I'd like us to, to go into the week with. Um, I love the Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter movies. And I've seen the movies so much, I forget what's from the book and what's from the movies, but this is in the movie. And there's a beautiful scene where Dumbledore is dead and Harry meets him on a train station and they're having a beautiful conversation. And Harry says, professor, is this real or is it all in my head? And Dumbledore says to him, of course, it's all in your head, but what makes you think that makes it not real? <laughs> and I thought- I love that. that. Is when you say, uh, you listen to the whispers and you're like, oh, there's my friend, this is that. And I said, you know, I do believe the universe. I love that you 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 taught me that phrase, Terry, the quantum, uh, the, quant uh, the quantum right. flow. And so I, ever since uh, Terry told me that phrase, I go through my day looking for quantum flirts and you, <laughs> See that little moment, it catches you and it reminds you of something. And I go, of course it's in my head, but that doesn't mean it's not real. That so is beautiful. I, yeah, so I want you to say your last words. Uh, I'll just offer you a few last words, if you want, Carol, by saying, I invite us to all spend, you know, the two weeks before we gather enough, just looking for those quantum flirts as we listen to our whispers uh, and, just, and just see what it brings to you next two weeks. Yes. Did you want to say something in closing, Carol? I, I echo exactly what you say. I, I, I love that quote that you said, even if it's in your head, what, why doesn't that, and of course it's real. I mean, that's a beautiful way of acknowledging that because I have uh, this imagination and it's like, of course it's real. Sometimes I see these rainbows. I have these little crystals in my window and I'm like, well, that's my brother because I've had some losses recently and I was like, of course, you know, so of course it's real. Yeah. Yeah. I love your name. And you know what my spiritual name is from one of the groups that I'm in is Quantum Indigo. So I'm just like, wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> That's oh, fabulous, that's Angie. Great. All right, everyone. Well, feel free to come off mute and say goodbye. Thank you so much for this time together. Thank you. Yes, Carol, thank you for your story. Thank you for everyone's presence. And always good to see you. And Angie, as I said, John, so good to see you. Um, but Angie, it's been a while, so I'm so thankful when I saw your face. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm going to try to be here faithfully every two weeks Good. and be more involved. Wow. Great to see you. Well, you so so your hearts are all yeah, traveling with me, and I love that. I feel you all right here. So thank you for including me. Hugs. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank everybody. You. Feel free to come off mute and say goodbye. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you. And peace. Bye. Hi. Anna and Shang Yang Tan. You are a beautiful joy. So Thank you for joining us today at Peace On. We hope that it inspires you to engage in dialogue in your larger community. Peace On is brought to you by the Peace Alliance, found 
at peacealliance.org.